Good afternoon. Chaplain Leslie here bringing you our weekly Vesper service for Sunday, July the 19th, 2020. As we begin our time together this afternoon, I have uh, a note that I need to share with you all. Uh, in our world of technology, sometimes we are at the mercy of our devices and uh, sometimes they're a little too smart for us. I am finding that to be the case today. And so I am, uh, with apology, scaling back our service time. And so it will be much shorter today, but I pray it will still be meaningful. I will continue to work to navigate through the technological issues that I am having. And so let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for the beauty of this day, for the opportunity to come and be in worship with one another in this season. I pray that you bless us through the power of the Holy Word on this day. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is going to be the first verse of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. I invite you now into a continued spirit of prayer. We will have a moment of quiet where I encourage you to pause our video, take all the time you need to lift up your own prayers, and then we will share the Lord's Prayer out loud together. Father God, we come into your presence on this day. So many needs on our hearts. We know that each of them we can give to you and that you will hear them and answer them. Prayers for healing of body, mind, and spirit, prayers for family and friends, for our community, for our country, indeed for our world, for the coronavirus and all of the impact that it's had on everyone. Keep us strong in the face of it all, Lord. Hear the prayers that come from the quiet places in our hearts as well. And Lord, may we pray the prayer that you taught us praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God's seeds of love have already been sown in your midst. Come and see the love of God outpoured for you. Know that you are God's beloved ones. Come all and live in the light of God. Our scripture reading for this afternoon, again from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption into sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, 
but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. May God add his blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. Many of you have been sharing with me in these last months how heavy your hearts are. The coronavirus has seemed to take away our joy. It's as if every person has an open wound, and we're trying desperately for that wound to heal and to do all that we can to get it to heal. But the pain is there, and the healing just isn't happening. The last thing oftentimes we see before our day concludes is more news about the coronavirus. That's often the first thing we see or hear when we get up in the morning is more news about the coronavirus. I hear your concerns. We seem to make progress, then we slip back. I have a friend whose church resumed worship a few weeks ago for a couple of weeks, only then to discontinue it and go back to videoing their service because of the rise, the spikes again in the coronavirus. Like you all at the end of the day, I feel like a limp, wet noodle. I am tired. I am drained. I feel like my spirit is flagging. We're frustrated. We're tired because we don't know when it's going to end. And goodness knows the communication that we hear from the world around us is one bit of information one day and something different the next. No wonder we are tearful. No wonder we feel sorry for ourselves. No wonder we are discouraged. We begin to imagine that there might not be an end to all that we are experiencing. Where's the hope? We might be asking. And Paul tells us in this scripture passage that I consider that our present sufferings, he knows, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, as Christians, we might say, okay, Paul, we, we understand that intellectually, but how is that going to help us today? What's the word? What's the encouragement? What's the hope for today? First of all, if Paul were with us here today, he would certainly be able to say, I understand what you're going through. I encourage you to take a look at Acts, especially the chapters 20 to 28, and you will find all kinds of persecutions and arrests and imprisonments, even being shipwrecked that Paul went through. And yet he persevered, didn't he? And he persevered because of his faith, because he believed and trusted and was obedient to God. And he was obedient to God in Christ. And he knew in his heart that God would never let him down. We have the Holy Spirit given through God that we are in relationship with him in Christ, and that we are children of God. And if we are his children, we certainly belong to him. And that means also, as Paul tells us, that we are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Not just you and me, but indeed the whole world. And as those heirs, it means that we cannot remain the people that we once were. Our identities change. We are transformed as we are in relationship with God and with God through Christ. We have a new life and that personal intimate relationship continues to grow and it should. We're family after all, as Paul says. We grow in relationship with one another. We celebrate victories together. We celebrate sufferings together and in all of those circumstances we are never alone. You probably, maybe yourself, have said these words or known someone who has something like them. You can't possibly know what I'm going through. You're not me. You're not in my circumstance. And to some degree, I think that's true. We are in places of uniqueness in our own circumstances. However, especially right now, in light of the coronavirus, my goodness, we're kind of all in this together, aren't we? Sometimes it takes an encouragement, a different situation for us to realize that we're not in all of this alone. Time is something that God has in abundance, doesn't he? We may see that our own lives feel fleeting, especially as the years go by. 
Yet that does not mean that when we reach a certain point or a certain age that our life is done. I believe that God continues to have plans for us. We may hope and pray, I hope and pray, that we'll never ever have a year like this year has been. But I do believe with my whole heart that God is not done with this yet. While we are still in this painful time, there is good that we have to look forward to. And yes, I believe that there not only will be that good to come, but good today. The things that have not changed in our lives. Yes, we we cannot see family as we would like, but we have family. And for the most part, from what I hear from you all, you are so comforted in knowing that your family is well. You receive calls and cards from your family, and those are things that are an encouragement. I look out from my window sometimes in my office at the river, a river that is different as it is the same. There are days when the water looks very glassy and still, other times when the water gets churned up by passing boats, still other times when it looks like a storm is coming and the wind begins to blow and little white caps pop up across the water. Some mornings even fog rolls in. But in all of those circumstances, the river is still the river. God is always God. Even in the unsettled nature of today, there are places where we can be reassured that God is there. God is present. And God is definitely not done with this yet. Paul was up against huge roadblocks. Roman leadership who believed that the weaknesses of the flesh could be tamed by reason, by thought. Fellow Jews who believed that by following the Torah, one could be in control of the body. Yet as a Christian, Paul believed that the only way we could conquer the sins of the flesh was to live in the Holy Spirit of God. And because we live in Him, we are called to trust Him. We await the day that life is going to be better, Yet I do believe that there are blessings in our lives right now. And I pray that we continue to be patient in our hope. The hope that we have God in this life. The hope for what we don't know yet that will come. The hope that will be one day in our heavenly home. The hope that is seen and unseen comes from God. To be patient in these days surely is a challenge, yet to be patient is what we are called to do. And I believe that there is much to come that will be worth waiting for. If we can look at our lives, lives right now with an air of expectancy, imagine the possibilities. I am confident that God will not disappoint. Have faith, good people. Have faith that God has us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Our concluding hymn is one that might be new to you, but the tune might be familiar. And so I share the first verse of this one. It's called, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see. All the things that really matter. Be at peace and simply be. Thank you for your grace and understanding on this afternoon in the somewhat shortened time that we've had together today. But I do pray that it has been meaningful for each of you. Now let us close with our benediction. Go into God's world with confidence and hope. God's presence is with you in all that you do. Be those people who plant seeds of comfort and hope. God will bring about the harvest in due time. Amen. Amen, good people, and blessings on this day and all your days.